to see him. Uh, tomorrow. 
uh, morning, early. She's going to be there at like 6.15. Uh, so if we could pray for Myrna. She's been waiting for this knee replacement uh, for a long time. Let's continue to pray for Dennis Gentry uh, as he recovers from uh, his foot injury. And any other praises or prayer things? Oh, we've got a, a new baby in our midst. Uh, Lily is right there, and she has a full head of hair, <laughs> which makes me want to violate one of the commandments. <laughs> but we're so thankful for you guys and, and for God's blessing. Um, any, any other? Yes, dear. My niece uh, and her husband had um, their second child last week, and they had a girl. And when she went to the hospital, they took their son to the babysitter. He came home with COVID, and the whole family had COVID, including the newborn. Uh, so we want to keep them. So we want to keep Jerry's niece in our prayers. Just had a new baby. Uh, the, other child went to the hospital, I mean, went to the babysitters, got COVID, and now the whole family's had COVID. We're pretty sure. Okay. Anyone else? Yes? Our 64th anniversary is Tuesday. Oh, your 64th anniversary is Tuesday. What year was it? You guys were married? 66. 66. Okay. Anyone else? My grandparents just celebrated an anniversary last week. <laughs> 66 years. 66 years. 66 years. Debbie, we got some going in. <laughs> just 37. You know, we're just kids. Um, Anything else? I turned 30 also on their anniversary. <laughs> Confession is good for the soul. <laughs> Not everybody's as, as excited about that as you are. <laughs> 30, if that is. Somebody else? Yes. So she passed on Tuesday. All right. Well, the Lord be with you all as you mourn, but at least yes. you know where she's at. She's not in pain. She's getting on her feet. Yeah. That's the hope we have as Christians. Let's sing the prayer song.
mercies of man. That your love is new every morning. That your faithfulness is great. And uh, Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness to us uh, down through the years. Uh, Lord, I want to thank you for long-standing marriages. Folks that have given us an example of uh, faithfulness and uh, consistency. Lord, I want to thank you, uh, Lord, for uh, new babies. And uh, Lord, I pray your blessing on, uh, on Lily. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would be with uh, Jerry's uh, niece and her family, especially the new baby. Uh, Lord, bring healing and wholeness in every way. God, we just love you and we give you praise and glory and honor for all this. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would be with those who are uh, mourning uh, still the loss of uh, loved ones, especially after uh, God, uh, the funerals and, and services and visitations are over. Uh, Lord, we know that that's a, a, a tough time. <clears throat> Uh, God, uh, we thank you, uh, Jesus, that uh, we can turn to you when uh, facing uh, sickness and difficulty. Uh, Lord, we pray uh, that you would be with this uh, person experiencing migraines. Uh, Lord, minister to them in the power of your spirit. I, I pray for healing and wholeness in any way that you choose to give them. Uh, Lord, uh, I pray that medicines would have uh, their proper effect and limited negative side effects. Lord, I pray, uh, God, uh, today for Myrna McCracken. Uh, Lord, I pray for your touch on her body. Uh, I pray, uh, Lord, that the surgery uh, would go well for the knee replacement, that the recovery would be quick, and that uh, Myrna would be able to move with, without pain. Uh, Lord, we just ask that in your precious name. Lord, we pray for the uh, gentleman, uh, Rich, whose house, uh, there was an explosion and he lost everything. Uh, God, I pray that you would just minister that to him. And I, I pray that you would provide for his needs. I, I pray for healing and wholeness, uh, Lord, as he recovers from the injuries. Uh, Lord, we uh, would pray uh, today for Naomi's heart ministries. Uh, Lord, just minister there in the Philippines. Uh, thank you for all the things that are happening. Uh, the schools, the churches, the uh, ability to minister in the prisons. Uh, God, just uh, empower that ministry and uh, Lord, uh, help us to know how to partner with them. Uh, God, I pray for the food pantry. Lord, thank you that we have uh, folks here that give generously every week. Uh, Lord, that, uh, that work hard to pack the bags, do the shopping, uh, do the cooking, and then, uh, Lord, distribute the food. And Lord, I pray that you would be with each person who visits uh, the food pantry. May they sense your love and, and your presence. Uh, God, we would also pray, uh, Lord, for the Faith Harvest Church. Uh, God, minister to them in the power of your spirit. Thank you for them. Uh, Lord, bless their pastors, especially touch Matt's body. And uh, Lord, I pray, uh, God, that, that Matt and Heidi, Pastor Matt and uh, Pastor Heidi, as they lead these uh, kids to the sin, uh, that kids' lives would just be uh, changed in, in a powerful way. Uh, Lord, we would also pray uh, for Tamara Gerber. Uh, God, bless her in her ministry. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would pour out your spirit upon her. Be with the Barker's Chapel Church. Uh, Lord, may they be faithful. May you uh, bless them abundantly with your presence, even, even this uh, Sunday as they worship. Uh, Lord, be with our nation. Uh, God, uh, I pray for our leaders to have wisdom as they handle difficult issues. Uh, I pray, uh, Lord, that you would bring renewal and revival in, in our nation. We need you, Lord. And we humble ourselves. And we ask for your help. God, you are worthy. Now teach us to pray as you taught the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we'll receive the Lord's tithes and our offerings.
went through a weight loss program this week. Yeah. <laughs> And this was a lot faster than changing my diet. <laughs> Lost a couple pounds. Uh, just up top, but it, it distributes, so it's all good. It's great to be with you this morning. We had a ton of anniversaries this week. And I, I want to ask you a question. When, when did you feel like, I now, now I know my spouse? <laughs> now, now I really get that. Still working on it. <laughs> We're, uh, my wife and I have been married for 12 years uh, this month. And uh, I had no idea that she liked quartet music. They started singing and she went bananas. And I was like, something I don't. I've never seen that before. Uh, she loved the music this morning. Thank you so much for sharing, uh, for for being willing to come out. Uh, there's something where we we say like I I want to know I want to know God, and then there's this overwhelming part where you go like, but I never will. I'll never really, I'll never really fully grasp. I'll never fully understand. If you can't understand your spouse who you've been with, just a person, and you could have been with them for ever, 60 years, that's forever. <laughs> it's well on its way to forever. And you go like, I, no, I don't know yet. I'm working on it. But I don't know them like that yet. I haven't figured them out yet. Can we be comfortable with the fact that we are getting to know God, but we don't know God? Somebody. If you can spend your entire life with a person, and you still don't go like, my God. God who is infinite, who is eternal. We get this opportunity, though, to enter into a kind of relationship where we get to grow with God. Grow in understanding. Grow in knowing. Understand what He loves. Understand what He wants from us, but also understand what we want from Him. It's a give and take. And it's very much like marriage, or it should be. It should be that kind of intimate. And it should be that kind of bewildering. People who have faith figured out scare me. Because this is, it's a lot. God is a lot. And those who have it all figured out are like, you should go back to the question then. There is so much to this life and to this relationship. Which is why we can talk to any, any group of people from very young to less young. And you still have the opportunity to know them differently than you did before. The same way that you do with your spouse. It may be at year 70 that you go, ah. I didn't know this about you. I had never seen this before. And the way that they continually surprise you, God does that all the time. And when you say, I'm growing, I'm growing my relationship with my spouses, it's very similar. Because they're, when you say, like, well, what area are you growing in? You can't go like, oh yeah, this thing. Hardly ever. You're growing as a person, just knowing another person. And this is the way that we grow with God. We grow in all these different aspects at one time. And He hones and shapes us in all these different aspects at one time. Last week I talked about being faithful. Being faithful in the next step that God's asking you to take. I didn't 
leave the message going like, well, that wasn't, that wasn't very good. I actually thought it was a great message. <laughs> Because I go like, there's so many, there's so many aspects of our life with God. And there's so many steps that we're taking with Him on a regular basis, on a moment-by-moment basis. And so I kind of want to talk about those things. What does it look like? And, and prayer is part of it, where we have conversation. But there's so much of our life that we grow in a relationship by being with one another, by observing one another. By being away from one another and coming back. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> when Mallory and I got married, we were we were passionate about following God with our whole lives. But we were the same kind of passionate for God that we were for one another. We were in love. In love, in love. You know the couples that are always like, there's always contact. There's always physical contact everywhere that they go. And you go like, that's adorable and practical. Do you know what I'm talking about? I need more from you. Okay, do you understand me? There's too much time left for this to be all I'm getting. I need more from you. It's just feedback. The couples that you see walking down the street and their arms are all around each other and they're all walking and you're like, geez, good for them. <laughs> That's the kind of in love we were with each other, but also with God. Where there's this passion for each other, but there's no understanding of what it really costs to be together. Because we haven't paid any price yet. And the longer that you live with somebody, the more you go like, oh my gosh. It's going to cost everything. <clears throat> Now, y'all don't remember this because you, you've been friends with people. You've been married to people for so long. Do you even remember what it's like to have your own free time? <laughs> <laughs> but in those first few years of marriage, you go like, oh, oh, no. Like, I don't have free time. I don't have my own free time anymore. I only have our free time, which is not my free time. <laughs> And when kids are born, it's the same way, yes? You go like, oh my gosh, we were, we were free and we didn't know it. <laughs> we thought we were busy and we weren't. <laughs> and when you grow with God, there's this, like, there's this, uh, there's these phases that you come into where you go like, my life isn't my life anymore. <clears throat> I don't get to just do whatever I want anymore. Because the price really exists. And then, just like marriage, hopefully, just like marriage, hopefully, you go like, but it's so worth it. It's so worth the price that you pay. The alternative, doing whatever you want, whenever you want, you meet those people and you go like, they're weird. They're weird. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just playing but I'm saying, like, there, there is this need for that kind of connection. Need for friendship like that. And when we learn, uh, when we learn about God, when we spend time with Him, we lose parts of our life that we used to hold as our own. We do whatever we want with these parts. But as we spend time with Him, we give those things up. Sometimes on purpose and sometimes not on purpose. So when we first got married, 
when we talked about prayer, it was what you think of with prayer. Where you say the words that you mean to say to God. And where you may listen to words that you want to hear from God. And I have all kinds of journals. And uh, I, would, I would take different color pens for, for who's talking. So when I would pray, I would write in black ink, God, this, 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 and this. Um, and this was the kind of conversation that I had. And then I would listen, and if he would speak back to me, I would write in red ink. So that I, I could write down what he would say to me. And that was how our conversations went. What was, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It actually lasted, that lasted for many, many years. And it grew from me pouring out my heart, this love, these long things, which were bad, these long writings where I would speak. And then a couple sentences from God that I would wait and listen for what is he going to say to all the things that I just said. And so I would write down my couple of sentences from God. And that grew into, I'm going to talk a little bit less. I'm going to listen a little bit more. And we ended up with about 60-40 probably. But the more that he talked, the more I went, I want to hear more from you. I would like to know more of what you think. I already know what I think. And so I spent many hours going like, what, what do you say? What do you say about these things? And during those times, I would begin to write, and it became much, much less. It became more like I'm listening and writing 80% of the time. And I'm speaking about 20% of the time. <clears throat> during that transformation, during that transition, because that's a transition in my own life. I, I like to articulate things. I like to, to speak. I don't know if you've noticed that. It is one of the things that, that God has given me to do, but it's something that I like to do. And the transition to listener was very helpful to me as a person in all of my relationships. When I know like every conversation I have, I actually already know what I think. And it's more interesting to find out what do you think. Because I don't know. And I watched as this aspect of my relationship with God actually helped all of my friendships. It made it much easier to make connections with other people. God reshaped and reformed my life in just this aspect. It's just this little, little part. During that same time, I watched as we grew up, we grew up in like Muncie, Indiana. It was not that far away. And um, for all intents and purposes, it's the same place. I promise you, if you meet somebody from any other country and you say, I'm from Muncie versus Angola, there's no difference to them. <laughs> It's all, it's all the same state, which they don't even know the state. It's all the Midwest. So we grew up eating what, what everybody ate. We grew up living the way that everybody was living. And we were about middle class families. Uh, the reason I'm telling you this is, is we went through this transformation as a couple where we decided that food was very important to our lives. And I don't remember deciding that. We didn't make a decision. 
We just decided that we wanted to live as healthy as we possibly could. And at some point during research and thought, we went, food actually is energy for your body. And so when you eat a hot dog, it's not good fuel. Because who knows what that is? <laughs> If you went to a gas station and went like, give me whatever, and then just hit whatever button and just shove it in and fuel it up with whatever, you wouldn't do that because it would be irresponsible because you want your car to run a long time. You want it to run as efficiently as possible. And yet, when we sit down at the table, we go like, whatever, just shove it in. It'll be great. I'm going to feel good. And then later we're like, man, I'm really tired. Yeah. You went, give me whatever. All of these things, as I look back on it, I go like, God changed our mind on this. He, cha he changed our mind because I know our upbringing was to hit the whatever button. Our, our parents don't care about any of that. But they still don't. <laughs> they just call us picky now. <laughs> I want to be like an odd couple reference, but I don't know what it is. So I just have it in the back of my mind. We're just strange to them because we care about these things. And, and we grew up on, like, Eat candy, just eat candy as kids. And we don't do that because when we give our kids, it's like we gave them drugs. They go nuts. As soon as sugar is their system, they lose their minds. <laughs> well, all growing up, Skittles was like a food group. <laughs> really are, you know, they have this kind of body, you eat them, and you, you feel this way. Right? God has changed our mind about just this, this, this one aspect. Where he goes like, this is fuel for your body. What do you want to put in your body so that you can go through your day really well? So that you set yourself up for the, the success that you want long term. Look, the reason I'm sharing all of this is that you go like, well, what's my next step? It doesn't have to be this spiritual, like have this kind of devotion or have this kind of prayer time or have this kind of, it's not religious, it's your life. God wants to transform your life, not just your religious life. And if we're open to saying, like, I'll change anything for you. Then he really will. Is this beginning to make sense? Does it feel like a rambling? <laughs> That's like a
like truly mechanical minds because the way they talk is mechanical, but also because they're like super interested in this aspect that I have nothing, I have nothing to do with. And you, if you've seen me fix something, you know that. <laughs> God has wired them to figure things out, and as they figure things out, I, they are connected to the one who made them. It is the way they spend time with God. It's the way they pour into humanity. The way that we think about give back. Give back to the people around you. Give to the poor. Give to, to the world the way that God would have you give to them. If we would take this out of a religious context and go like, who are you and what do you have to offer? What's God made you to give? And it's not the same thing for everybody. Thankfully, because if I had to fix your car, it would be worse off than when we started. <laughs> Taking it apart, no big deal. <laughs> Not a problem. I can get that done for you. <laughs> Together again, not so much. <laughs> it's why being up here is more natural for me. Uh, this is what I think about when I'm not here. I think about how would I say this? And always in conversation, I'm looking for hooks in the way that people say things. I go like, man, that's a really good way to say that. And I'll grab a hold of it and I'll steal it later. <laughs> it's how I'm wired. It's what I'm like. And this is what I have to offer. I don't, I don't have a mechanical thing. All right? This is what I have. And so I meet people who, who are musical or who, um, this is a really good, for instance, we have flowers up here every Sunday. And there's a couple who's very intentional about foliage. It's a connection to God. It's an offering. To us and to Him every time. <clears throat> it's how they're wired and what they care about. And instead of going like, that's weird because I don't have that, go like, awesome. Not only do you not have to take care of it, but you still enjoy the benefit of them doing what God made them. This is being the body. Being the body of Christ where everybody's a different piece. That's why when you go, what's your next step? And everybody goes, prayer. <laughs> okay, that's fine. But what kind? What kind of prayer? What does it look like? Prayer is a great answer. What does it look like for you to pray? As in to have a conversation. You meet some couples that they will go to dinner and they don't say anything to each other, hardly at all. They're just being together. And maybe it's because it's been 60 years and they already said anything. <laughs> it's all done. We finished the conversation. We checked that box. And then you like, if you see us on a date, we never shut up. <laughs> we don't. We've got so many things that we haven't shared with one another because instead we have children. <laughs> and so we haven't made eye contact for many moons. <laughs> and so when we sit down just together, we just blah, 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 blah. Everything. So many things have happened since I saw you last. Time. 
If we can make this connection with God and go, there are people who want to talk and talk and talk to Him. There are people who want to write and journal and understand Him that way. And there are people who just want to sit and just do it. I was talking to uh, one of our Sunday school classes this last week. We were talking about what if, what if God's not talking? What if He's not answering you? You're asking these questions. You have these questions for Him. And you're bringing it up and you're, you're asking Him in prayer. You're asking Him in your regular life. And, and you're not hearing anything back. My answer was, maybe this is not what He wants to talk about. You've had somebody like sidle up to you and start having a conversation, and as soon as they start the conversation, you're like, I'm not talking about this. <laughs> so I'm not doing it. Not necessarily because it's offensive, but maybe. maybe. Maybe it's just oversharing. Maybe there's no interest. It doesn't matter what the reason is, but they're, you're kind of waiting just for any other kind of conversation to have. And I would say, and there are times, where we're going like, God, I need, I need to know this. And if you did, he would tell you. Living with the not answer is an answer. Maybe you need to seek it harder. Maybe you should. Maybe you need to talk about something else. And I'll tell you where we've grown the most over the last 12 years is when we go to God and we say, what do you want to talk about? And he has said things like, people that you've never met before. All right, tell me about that. And for me personally, there's been this huge vein in my life towards business, towards commerce. Because I work with people who are in nations that don't have very much. They don't have very much, many businesses, they don't have very many opportunities. There aren't jobs. And the ones that there are, are for specific people who have specific human connections. And if you don't have them, you can forget about it. And it's made me fascinated with companies like Walmart who hire Everyone and sometimes anyone. <laughs> and they have this opportunity to be successful. And they have to do just like a handful of things, like show up. <laughs> and then do the one thing I asked you to. And they'll be successful. They can make the money that we promised them, and we do give it to them. And then they can get benefits on top of that. And then on top of that, they have opportunity for future gain. That's fascinating to me. Because it's more rare than I wish it was. But that makes business to me very godly. Because he gives us these same kinds of opportunities all the time. Where he gives us a seed and goes plant it and water it and then watch it. He gives us a, a, just a little bit of skill in an area. And you can watch as you hone the skill and it grows into a tree of a skill. A tree that bears fruit. A tree that bears fruit, enough for yourself, but also fruit enough that you can give it to other people. God does the exact same thing. There are companies that say, like, we'll teach you to do the things that we need you to do. And as you learn those things, you will be more beneficial to the company, but also to yourself to your family, to your community. And I go like, that's amazing. And it has made me very intentional in business because I know. I know that what I'm doing, I, yeah, I'm doing it for the company. Yes, I'm doing it for my family. I work for God. 
I want to be the best leader. It is for them. Fine. But it's for him. Because if I don't do what I'm supposed to do today, then years from now, it'll still just be the seed that he gave me in the first place. And I'm getting much, much better at being a leader. And I feel like I'm on an accelerating growth plan right now because I'm uncomfortable all the time. And I, I feel, you know those, like, those years where you grow too much at one time and you're tripping over everything, you're running into everything? Yeah, you know that? Joey <laughs> says yes. Yeah. It's edge. <laughs> or suspense. <laughs> But that's how I feel right now. I don't know that I lead well, but I lead constantly. And I run into a lot of stuff, and sometimes it goes okay. I'm growing in it, and this is part of my growth in relationship with God. Gracious, I've gone too long. All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What's that? Nobody is complaining. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, look, when Jesus teaches this, that he is the bread, he does this, this amazing recall. Jesus does this throughout all of his teachings. But if you don't know the Old Testament, you don't know that he's quoting it. <laughs> we barely know the New Testament. Very rarely know the Old. Jesus says this like Isaiah 54, 13 verse where he goes, your children will be taught by God. And the only version you read, it, it is, it's this prophecy that there will be a time where the people of God are taught by God himself. And when they are, they will prosper. And when you go, what's your next step? To learn from God in the area that He has given you. In the different stages of life, it's a different thing. And I'm finding that people who retire receive different seeds than they maybe ever have planted before. They have different opportunities for growth and understanding than they ever did. And it's amazing to see the people who plant those seeds. And I want you to, please, I want you to see the things that you're giving your life to as giving your life to God. When you're intentional with your grandchildren, you're giving your life to God. You are honoring the family that He gave you. When you wake up early to spend time with friends that you, you rarely see, you are being intentional with your life to God. Every aspect, not just these aspects, every aspect of your life, you get the opportunity to learn from God, but also to honor God in the things that you're doing, in the things that you're saying. This is why several weeks ago I went like, Talk to your waiters better, please. Every action, every action is for him and towards him. Jesus said things like, when there's somebody thirsty and you say, forget it, you said it to him. When somebody brings, <laughs> and I'll say this, when somebody brings you a drink and you go, that's not right, I go to something else, you said it to him. Say it better. Say it like you're saying it's somebody that you love. Or don't go out. This is how we represent Him well. This is how we honor God in public. By honoring His people. Who are His people? Just everybody in me. Some of them know that they are. And some of them don't yet. The ones that don't yet 
show them what it's like to be loved and honored. Every interaction. Learn from God and then give it back to humanity. Would you pray with me? God, we're really thankful for the way that you lead us, for the way that you guide us, for the things that you ask us to do, for the things that you ask us to learn. We're thankful that we do get to pray to you and that you do listen. I ask that as we enter into every phase, stage, and intricacy of our lives, that we would be intentional to honor you, to know you, to be with you, to be like you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Would you join us in singing a verse because someone spoke for too long? <laughs> Would you stand with us?